Hey guys, what's up? It's Levi and I'm back with another Alpine Online video. This time we'll look at some of the most important PvP skills in Alpine Online. Every skill matters in a fight, and within these, some skills can dramatically impact the outcome of the fight, to the point that it can literally win or lose it for you. Within today's video, we'll be mainly looking at skills that have a big impact in 1 vs 1 and small scale fights, such as in the Corrupted Dungeons and Hellgates. I'll go over 5 skills, spells, abilities, explain what they do, tell you how you can recognize the animations and how you can counter them. To get an advantage before the fight even starts, it's very important you inspect your enemies, so that you can see what pieces of equipment they have and recognize what abilities they are using by doing so. More PvP tips like this in my video with 15 tips all beginners must know, which I will link in the description below. Make sure to check that one out if you haven't yet. The first ability we will look at is Retaliate, which is one of the most difficult ones for beginners to fight against, making for most of the suicides in Albion Online without the slash suicide command even being used. Retaliate is a unique ability that belongs to the Hunter Hood. You will recognize this skill by the red aura that surrounds someone, accompanied by three red shields that float around them. If you look at the description of Retaliate, it says it does two things. It increases resistances and it reflects 70% of incoming damage back at the attacker. Because of this, this skill is simply called Reflect by the players. So how do you deal with Reflect? Since the duration of Retaliate is 4 seconds, you could stop attacking for the duration. The moment you see those red shields pop up, immediately start walking away. If you have to, use your available mobility skills to get away. If you can't escape for any reason, because you got CC'd for example, and you have immunity skills available to you, you could also use those. This could be something like the Ice Block of the Clerical, or the Everlasting Spirit of the Cleric Rope. The third way to deal with Retaliate is to purge it. Purging means you remove the active buffs of an enemy, and you can do this with various items. The most popular one is the Mage Rope, which has the Purging Shield, followed by the Fiend Cal, which has the Purge Skill. Although the ability Retaliate is unique to the Hunter Hood, Reflect as a skill is not. Parry Strike on the W of Swords also has a Reflect, and so does the Deflecting Spin on the W of Spears. You need to anticipate the Parry Strike or bait it out, and the Deflecting Spin you can interrupt since it's a channel. Another very popular Reflect that's being used a lot in Corrupted Dungeons is the Inferno Shield on all leather armors, which I will cover later in this video. Moving on to the second ability which is Purging Shield. I just mentioned this one as a counter against Retaliate and it's good for so much more. The Purging Shield is the unique skill of the Mage Rope. Whenever you use this skill you will be surrounded by a purple aura and have 3 magic bolts spin around you. Just like Retaliate, the Purging Shield also increases resistances and also has a 4 second duration. What it does differently is make your enemy lose buffs whenever they damage you as long as the shield is up. The only buffs they don't lose are healing over time effects. Now on the tooltip it says does not remove enemy heal effects, but this is pretty much wrong since the purging shield indeed does remove heal effects, such as bloodlust of the mercenary jacket and the lifesteal aura of the helian jacket, so the tooltip definitely has to change to make it more accurate. A lot of builds rely on buffs, and that's what makes the mage rope so scary. It's the ultimate nullification rendering you weak with little counterplay to it. If you are quick to notice the purging shield, you might stop yourself from attacking and losing your buffs. However, this will net you a 4 second downtime in which your buffs will slowly run out and in which you can't do any damage, so the best course of action often will be to disengage. The purging shield does have a 45 second cooldown, which is pretty high, so the moment you engage again, you won't have to worry about it for quite a while. You can of course also keep attacking and lose your buffs, but make sure not to use any skills that heavily rely on your stacks or buffs. So if you play Claymore for example, and your heroic charge stacks get purged by the purging shield, you do not want to use your e-skill charge, since you will be doing minimum damage without any stacks. Try to be patient and build up your stacks or buffs again before going for the big hits. Funny enough, one of the counters against the mage rope is the hunter hood, since you don't really want to attack your enemy if they have the purging shield active, but they definitely don't want to attack you either when you have reflect. And if you notice your enemy has a purge and you happen to have a skill with an immunity against purges, such as the iron will on the W of the swords, you might want to swap to it for that specific fight. Enough about this counter duo, let's move on to the third skill which is the inner corruption that belongs to the cultist skull. 
Now this skill applies a 7 second long debuff on the enemy, which makes them take damage every time they attack or use an ability, pretty much rendering you vulnerable for these 7 seconds. And since this skill gets cast on you, you can't purge it either. What's even crazier about this skill is that it can be casted from 9 meters, making it a ranged ability. And as if that wasn't enough, you have a 25% uptime with this skill, since the cooldown is only 30 seconds. You recognize the inner corruption by the red sphere that gets thrown at you, which leads to a red shadow under your character. Every time you take damage because you attacked or used an ability, the shadow then takes over your character's entire party, warding you of the harm you are doing to yourself. Definitely one of the scariest offensive skills out there. So how do you deal with the inner corruption? Honestly, I think the best thing to do is to simply run away. And yes, only 20 seconds later you will most likely have to run away once again, but that's just how it is with the inner corruption. The thing is, countering the skill is a matter of luck. You can cleanse the skill with a mercenary hood or any other cleanse skill in the game, but how likely is it that you have a cleanse in a 1 vs 1? Very unlikely I would say. You could also heal your way through it if you happen to have a mercenary jacket for example, but it's all very situational. So the most safe option is to disengage. If you have any immunity skills, you can of course also pop those and not take damage from the inner corruption as well. I wouldn't be surprised if this skill would get nerfed at some point. I can see the cooldown become higher or the duration of the skill shorter since it's pretty overwhelming as it is right now. I like to think the skill was implemented as a way to deal with healers to balance the sustain for 7 seconds, but the moment it's cast on someone without any healing abilities, it becomes a one-sided dance of torture. Next up is the Mercenary Jacket. I feel this is a skill of which you don't notice the impact until it's too late. This jacket has the unique skill Bloodlust, which heals you every time you damage an enemy for as many as 15 hits or 8 seconds, whichever comes first. This makes for an insane amount of sustain in a 1 vs 1. Now the cooldown of this skill is 1 minute, which is pretty high, but that doesn't take away from the impact this skill has. What you will sometimes see is that people combine the mercenary jacket with the spectre hood which resets the bloodlust skill and makes it immediately available for use once again, making for double the sustain, and one activation of the bloodlust already makes for a ton of sustain. You recognize bloodlust by the red aura that surrounds someone, indicating they are about to heal from doing damage. Another popular item with this sort of sustain is the Helian Jacket, but this one requires you to be in melee range, whereas the Mercenary Jacket does not. Even as a ranged player, you can benefit from the sustain on this armor, so for 1 vs 1s, the Mercenary Jacket is superior. By now you know what purges are, and you already know that purges are the big counter against Bloodlust as well. Obviously don't want to get hit when your enemy has Bloodlust active to deny them any possible healing but this alone won't stop them as they can still heal on monsters. So if you're in a corrupted dungeon and using the mercenary jacket yourself, don't limit your sustain by damaging your enemy alone. Make use of the monsters as well. And of course, if your enemy is the one with the mercenary jacket, be cautious of the mobs around you. Running away, of course, always is an option, although as said already, your enemy can still benefit from this ability in different ways. And you can of course also use any form of immunity to deny them healing, although you most likely won't cover the full 8 seconds. And lastly, the Inferno Shield as promised. With the introduction of the Corrupted Dungeons, this ability became very popular. You can find it on all the leather armors, since it's not a unique skill bound to one specific item, but rather a shared one for the leather chest piece category. When you use this skill, you get surrounded by a fire tornado for 8 seconds. Whilst this skill is active, your resistances are increased and you reflect 30% of the incoming damage before armor and magic resist back to the attacker. Now I had to test this out because I wasn't sure whether the tooltip is talking about my armor, enemy's armor or only the additional armor you get from the inferno shield itself. The conclusion however is that you reflect more than 30% back to the attacker. When I received 44 damage, I was reflecting back 17, and 30% of 44 is only 13, so you can conclude it's noticeably more than 30%, which makes it a pretty strong skill since it has an 8 second duration, which is a long time for a 1 vs 1, and on top of that it also makes you more tanky. By now we already know what reflect is and how to deal with it, so there is no need to repeat that. Nonetheless, this is a very important skill to be aware of right now, and that's why I wanted to go over it. And that concludes the 5 abilities I wanted to share with you in this video. I'm sure some of you have your own ways of dealing with these abilities. 
feel free to share your tips and tricks in the comments below. And if there are any other abilities you would like to see featured in the next video because you have a hard time fighting against it or because you think many players should know about those abilities, let me know and perhaps I'll cover it. If you like this video, consider subscribing and turn on notifications for my YouTube channel. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you wish to connect with me, you can do this through my Discord server and Twitch, which you can both find in the description below. For now, I hope this video brought you value and wish you good luck in your adventures. Have a good one and I'll see you next time. Everything